Hey guys, Artosis here with the Cash Music Rock Star League Season 4. This is the round of four. It's a best of seven, and it's game number two of Stork against Yabsab. Uh, definitely do check out game one if you haven't seen it yet. Yabsab able to take Stork down in that previous game. He got a lot of damage with his early Zerglings, and Stork. Uh, I think he fought back reasonably well, but really never could find a foothold anywhere. After losing the amount of probes that he did, he was just behind economically. Couldn't quite make anything work out for him. So some fantastic plays out of Yabsab. Uh, definitely the future looking bright for this Zerg. And now we're on Eclipse. Definitely a map that's going to play out a bit differently. Stork. Throwing down the pylon and immediately scouting here. He's going to go the longer way around to avoid the Overlord. I think generally when you see the pylon scout like this, it's going to end up being a Forge Pass expansion. We'll see if Yabsab goes for uh, a hatch first or some other manner of going. Look at this, the, uh, the probe avoiding the Overlord. So there's always the possibility that this probe can do something sneaky. Although we haven't seen a Forge started yet. This could end up being... Like a Nexus first. He actually goes right past the drone. And turns around to follow. So it looks like he was kind of expecting maybe for the natural to be screwed up. Whether that is via cannon rush or pro blocking it with a pylon. But with the drone immediately going to the third base. Looks like he does want to go ahead and maybe put his expansion down here. Notice the probe taking a bit of damage there from the drone. The drone actually can win in a fight against the probe. And the probe just kind of coming back down here, getting chased once again. And it is going to be a forge into Nexus. Of course, he's going to get up here and scout this spawning pool. And not a whole lot that you can do right here. Uh, you can't do like a can rush or anything like that. Honestly, he has slowed him down like a little bit with the probe since two drones have been out here for a long time. Hatchery at the natural first. This drone's still just kind of waiting at that third base. Certainly going to throw a hatchery down relatively quickly. And the Nexus starts for Stork. So, I mean, this is kind of an old school. And it's kind of funny because I was talking about at the beginning of game one how I think Stork has really modernized his Protoss versus Zerg. A lot of his games look really similar to the types of plays, the types of strategies that Mini uses. But in this game, at least, not really the case. I mean, it could have turned into something interesting if there was a hatchery first. But uh, you have to have too smart playing around that quite a bit. So cannon going down, certainly gateway will be next, but honestly not a lot of action other than this probe. This is really the only thing worth watching in the game right now, right? Like it's thrown down a pylon to delay this, a couple of lings will come up and attack, which allows the, the probe to heal up a little bit, right? It's not being attacked at all, can jot back in here, try to take a look and figure out, okay, are we going quick layer? Are we going quick circling speed, banking up for hydras? And, you know, most likely it's just a layer. Yeah, you see the layer go down. Because with the probe still alive, if you try anything else, Stork is actually going to get way ahead by just defending it very, very easily. Very, very simply. So a little bit of mining there from the minerals. Does cost a slight amount of lost mining time here for Yabsab. But honestly, again, nothing too, too impactful. The Overlord getting some vision of when this gateway is finishing. Finally, it finishes up and the first cell it does start. Cybernetic score immediately on the way to look for exactly when he wants to get his second gas going. Yeah, very, very quickly. No big surprise there. Probe continues to run around. It has taken a little bit of hull damage, although you don't expect this probe to die anytime soon here. Zergling speed is on the way, as well as that third hatchery at the third base. But yeah, it looks kind of normal so far. Uh, let's not forget that Yabsab has shown us a lot of games where he does end up going Mutalisks in the early portions and then switches over uh, to Hydra play a little bit later on. That could be the case here, especially now that I'm seeing Zergling speed, a decent amount of Zerglings being made as well. The Spire going down right in front of the probe's eyes. But of course, that can be a very normal macro opening build as well where you just get a few Scourge. Now, the first two Zealots are coming across the map. This first cell is going to go to the third base. Going to force some extra lings out with that. In fact, we see already a decent amount of lings have been made. Looks like we have about 10 lings on the map. Oh, tries to get this drone. Doesn't quite get it. 
Of course, that Zergling, that Zealot will run behind the minerals as quickly as possible here. Oh, the flank! I love it. Beautifully done by Epsep. In fact, even micros that one out. Oh, maybe getting a little bit too fancy. Very superb micro there, though. So that does get dealt with. And, of course, this is all going to be picked off as well. That Zergling speed so, so useful in a situation like this. Now, the Stargate just about finishing up. Plus one air attacks has already been on the way for quite some time. Citadel coming also. And we get to see now, are we just going to see a bunch of hatches added? Are we going to see mutas made immediately? It's still just one gas, but you can go for a few mutas. Look, he's got an almost 500 gas bank. So you can make like four scourge and three mutas type of thing. All right. Couple scourge being produced. Zergling's just kind of keeping Scout out here. You notice Overlord's all over the place. Kind of retreating from where the Corsairs are going to be popping out so he doesn't end up losing those. Templar Archives on the way as well as Zealot Legs. Yes, there we go. Zealot Legs starting just now. So Stork kind of getting into all of the tech that he needs. A scout coming across the map. We still haven't seen any mutas as of yet. We do have these couple of Scourge, but really that's it as far as uh, Spire units go. But that might be him waiting to get rid of the Corsair, right? You don't want mutas popping out as this gets there, which he then scouts and then just runs away and reinforces, gets cannons up everywhere. So let's see uh, if he does go further with that. It looks like the answer is going to be no. We have uh, Overlord Speed as well as Hydra Speed and plus one missile attacks on the way. So definitely a transition from Yab Sab here into just pure Hydras. Now the Zealot's going to poke out a little bit here. Plus one almost done. Not quite though. Scouting Scourge coming up. Not going to find anything too, too interesting. I mean, you see the gateways going down, but this is what you expect. A few Corsairs going around the map. Might actually end up getting a nice catch here. Yeah, just kind of the macro portion of the game. I I gotta say, like, I think that is playing a very standard game. It looks good. It looks strong. Uh, the same can be said for Stork. Uh, he seems to be very much on top of everything. He's not overproducing anything. He's not underproducing everything. A little bit of pressure here and there. Like, he's seen those four Hydras, for instance. Loses his Zealot. Half damage on another one. That's fine. Right? Like, he really sees that, okay, these are gonna... This is Lurkers from here. So, a few more cannons going up. Psystorm, yep, I was wondering about that. It's like, ooh, you really do need Psystorm. So Psystorm on the way now for Stork. Yep, Seb starting to move across the map with his first big group of Hydras, but a couple cannons already were started. So very quick reaction times here from Stork. A DT chasing these down. It seems like with no Overlords in the vicinity, this DT is going to prevent them from really attacking right now. Should be an Overlord on the way since he does have speed. But look at this. He's actually trying to bust anyways. This is kind of crazy with the DT there as well. Really? Is this actually what you want to do? He loses the cannons, but kills off every single unit. The DT getting massive, massive damage in there. In the meantime, a couple Zealots have run past, trying to get some sort of damage. Looks like they have four kills total right now. Corsairs were roaming during this time as well. Overlord flying in for that that scout, I guess. It feels like that was maybe just like a, a rally or something that went in. Didn't seem that impactful. Still somehow a zealot left alive here. Of course, that will be picked off by those hydras. And Yabsab yeah, back into a few more drones while he does research the lurker aspect. So just trying to macro up into a pretty standard play here for Zerg. Whereas Stork, yeah, again, it, this is like a very straightforward game. And that's actually kind of making it interesting to me because, it, for instance, in the last game, Yabsab yeah, did get that early damage done and Stork kind of got smashed after that, even though it felt like he was playing reasonably well. Here, not that much has really happened on either side. Like, Yabsab yeah, tried for damage a little bit, but it wasn't a huge commitment. Just popped some cannons, lost some hydras. Whereas Stork playing one of the older, uh, normal styles. And we're going to see how he can do in this situation without that early damage. Looks like he's using these Zots to tank up some Hydra hits while he picks off Overlords. Doing a great job of that. Look at this supply just plummet right now. Some Scourge pop out and do end up killing one, but he got all the Overlords in this area. 63 of 78, so definitely some more Overlords going to have to be produced. The Hydras get up here and clear those Zealots out. 
In the meantime, the Corsairs, oh my god, they find a huge pack of Overlords here. Just massive here from Stork. He is going to pick off a ton of Overlords. Look at that, 68 of 54, a massive supply block. So, so painful to see. And in this time, a DT somehow shimmied his way into the main base. So many drones sent back in this direction. Still going after the Overlords. Oh my god! A massacre! 66 of 14 supply. Stork just dominating here with the Corsair DT play. Keeping Yabsab so, so, so busy. Taking a look back at Stork's base, he is mackering beautifully. He already has his robotics up getting range, getting that plus two armor. Finally, the DT will end up falling with eight kills to its name, but not a lot left here for Yabseb. He's finally resupplied with those overlords. A bunch of zealots coming down. Hydra's coming up for that flank, but there's more zealots than Hydra's here. You cannot fight against that. Yabseb getting absolutely pulverized this game. The surround is real, and I think Yabsab is close to death at this point. A 30 supply lead here for Stork as he runs into the natural. The drones trying to drill up, trying to help, but two Hydras is not enough to kill these in a million years. A lot of great glitching going on. The Zealots dancing all over each other. Running forward, but Muta's pop out. This is probably the last ditch effort. He does not even have a carapace upgrade for them. The Muta's diving on the Zealots. Stork immediately targets down the Spire so that the Muta's will not get out of hand. The Spire will fall. The drones will have to run. And Yabsab's attempt here to switch into Muta's. I mean, it's just it got scouted too quickly. If these appear at Stork's base, okay, then maybe. But the fact that they're still here killing off Zealots, let's take a look. Look at this massive Dragoon count. Psy Storms on High Templars with them. Look at this. Five Corsairs with the plus one attack against no Carapace upgrades. Stork's army is a Muta killing army. Yabsab, what's his army? Seven Mutas. A group of Hydras. It's just not that much. It seems very unlikely he'll be able to deal with what Stork is fielding right now. But one thing we can say positive about Yabsab's position, he has a very good drone count. 49 is really, really solid. So if he can get left alone for a little bit, he might be able to get an army out that can actually fight this. All right, dives in. After uh, after these uh, High Templars, he gets one. The other one ends up living through it, unfortunately. So seven Mutas for one High Templar. Doesn't feel like the greatest trade here for Yabsab. Stork's army marches towards victory. There is a no way, no how that Yabsab's going to hold on to this with these Hydras. He's got a lot of them in production, but even if those were already out, two good size storms, plus all these Dragoons with the 1-1 one -one upgrades, with plus two armor almost done. Yeah, he is going to slap through here. The storm goes down. Second storm goes down. The storms are okay. But the Dragoon Fire is what's really dealing the damage here. GG Stork wins game number two.